Right, I've tried this video many times, but I keep having problems, so we're just gonna do a real quick one right now. Okay, the Wang PC240. Screwless drive rails, brilliant. Soft power switch, so I don't have mains electricity going right through the center of my case, and I have a front switch. Sorry, it's that one there. Brilliant. A capacitor had shorted, and you can see it there. Well, it was there, right there. It's gone now. Zero ohms, not helpful. I've chucked in a VGA card, just a, I think it's a 512K, uh, just because I don't have enough spare monochrome monitors. I have four. There's the original Wang hard drive controller. All the chips are from Western Digital. The only interesting part about it is that it has an extra floppy connector. Now the BIOS, which is I've loaded a floppy here, as you can see only supports two. So I don't know why they did that, but the controller does support four, as far as I can tell. Um, um, I guess you could say it would be possible that it has one drive on each cable, but I don't think that's the case because it uses twisted cables, and it's got a B drive connector. All of the connectors on this machine are very nicely labelled, even the ones that go into the card down here have things like J1, J2, so you don't get them in the wrong place. Brilliant. I actually quite like this machine a lot. Now, I originally had an SC225, a 20 meg MFM. That unfortunately did not survive. So here we have a Seagate ST251. Now, the CMOS battery needs replacing. I haven't done it yet. It is Y2000 compatible. We can go right up to 2013 and it remembers without a problem. 1.2 meg floppy drive. I've got a ST251, so that's type 44. Now I found out that on this machine it was Type 44 because I used a program called Speed Saw. Now if you're doing low level format work or any work with MFM drives, I completely recommend Speed Saw. Anything else just seems like a joke in comparison. As you can see, 10 megahertz. Hopefully you can read that. We also got 8 and 6, but 10 suits me just fine. Now I remove the boot disk, hit escape, and we're done. Now I'm just going to power it off, so you can hear the sound of the ST251 spinning up. So the CMOS battery holds the settings for about I don't know, 20 minutes, and that's about all you get, and as required in all of these videos, I have to run a game of some kind, and I have installed SimCity off the original discs. Now I've put the code sheet away, unfortunately, but yeah, I'll just bring it up anyway. Thankfully I didn't have to install Origin, and didn't need five major updates so far. Just worked off the original floppies as is. Beautiful. Into the population. Ah, oh, there's probably five people. Say five people. Ah, oh, 22 people. 22 people? Oh no, city's wrath. We're gonna get disasters. As you can hear, we've got a boat. That's exciting. I actually remember when I was young and we were playing this game, and when we first heard our first boat or plane, we actually got excited. So things have changed. So this is a poor girl. Now I'm gonna put in a new 6 volt battery in there, and then I'm gonna put the case back together. Um, I'll probably install a CGA card. I do have a spare CGA monitor, provided the, the cable that I've got works. Uh, so we can set this up as a nice little machine. The, um, oh, that's the other cool thing. The sound of the auto park on the ST251. Very unique. Just to have a listen as it powers off. Sounds like a bad fart. And it makes that noise because what it's doing is it's swinging the head to the park section and it just keeps on hitting and hitting and hitting. It's perfectly normal. So yeah, this is my little wang. And, oh, that was a terrible joke. Never mind. That actually came out by accident. Uh, 
Yeah, well, here it is. The Wang PC240-3.